dying soldier I heard someone whisper Then I saw the blood come through my shirt Am I going to die here? I don't want to die here Someone come and pick me from the dirt I don't belong here I don't want to die here, oh no I don't belong here Don't let me die here, oh no Belfast, Northern Ireland. 65 years after its creation, this tiny state governed by London remains unstable. The British forces have constantly been opposed by the IRA, the Irish Republican Army, a clandestine military organization. The IRA is supported by Sinn Féin, the legal political branch of the nationalist movement. This film is a brief voyage onto one side of this conflict, that of the Irish nationalists. In West Belfast, unemployment is well over 50%. This part of the city is occupied, patrolled, and placed under constant surveillance by the British Army. Nonetheless, West Belfast remains an IRA stronghold. When I was first arrested, when the British troops raided the house that I was in, and they arrested me, uh, I felt relief. Uh, I'd been on the run for almost three years, uh, which was tearing, which was exhausting, which was, which was pressure. And my initial feeling was relief, which was, didn't last very long, because I was, I was then taken to the interrogation center. Uh, there, it was fear. Uh, I didn't know why I was going to get out of the, the interrogation center. I didn't know why I was going to die in it. Uh, so Today, Brendan Hughes is a member of Sinn Féin. But during the 1970s, he was considered by the British Army to be an important leader of the IRA. Arrested and interned in 1973, he became one of the first prisoners to escape from the high security prison of Long Kesh. Brendan Hughes has spent 13 years in prison. When they first brought us to the barracks, which is Springfield Road, uh, I was tied to the chair. I was repeatedly punched. Uh, my private parts were squeezed over a period of two or three hours. Uh, a gun was put to my head and it, there was no ammunition in the weapon. They fired the weapon told me that they were going to kill me and dump me up around here, around the mountain. Uh, my hands were stretched out on the table and I was repeatedly hit with a small hammer, uh, caused my hands to swell up. Uh, this went on for, for a period of eight, eight to nine hours, repeatedly punching, repeatedly asking questions about other people, other members of the Republican movement. Born in Belfast, mother and grandmother, Rita O'Hare is presently editor of Republican News, the largest selling weekly newspaper in Ireland. In 1971, she was seriously injured when shot by British soldiers. Following this incident, she took refuge in the Republic of Ireland. She has spent three and a half years in prison. Well, I can't carry you. Of course you will. He'll give you the transport home. The daddy. I know, I know. I know. Let us. It might be. But I'll... I know. I mean, I knew that there was no evidence to, to really to convict me on the charge, which was attempted to murder uh, a British soldier. And I can remember it was me that was <laughs> me that was nearly murdered. But um, I knew that while there was no, no evidence to connect me with, with that, Apart from the fact of me being there and being, uh, being known to have Republican sympathies, after the last court appearance that I made, I came out of, of the court and um, there was a group of British soldiers there, ones who had been given evidence. And in front of RUC men, legal people, sort of senior uh, British Army officers, two of them threatened to kill me and said, I mean, we should have sh we sh we finished her off at the time, but we'll get her. And another one, I heard another one saying, or we'll get our kids. 
It's 16 years now since I left Belfast. I can't go north. I don't go north. I don't take the risk because I think it would be crazy to do it for, for um, I mean, after taking this a major decision like that to leave, it would be crazy to, to, to risk being arrested. But I mean, at the times I would love to go, I really love to go home and I feel it a lot. Let it be another planet like heaven all the while. And in this abode, I hope, no woman will be called. It bears the name of Thatcher and drives the saints all wild. For every man knows that she has brought the north, the terrors of Lucifer, to persecute our people. <laughs> Talk about <laughs> In 1976, Bridge Brownlee was arrested for membership of the IRA and for possession of an incendiary device. She has spent six years in prison. Her husband, arrested following a shootout between an IRA commando and the police in Liverpool, is serving a life sentence in an English prison. Well, I joined the IRA after, um, from my childhood, was spent with being wakened at three and four o'clock in the morning by British soldiers raiding my home, um, arresting various members of my family. And throughout my childhood and adolescent years, I lost many friends who were murdered by the British forces in the north of Ireland. And I, I grew um, to realize exactly what was happening in my country and decided that I should join in the fight against it. And in every struggle, of course, the, the people who have been fighting have been portrayed as terrorists and mad bombers. Like everywhere you, you want to name, it's been that way. And I think that the terrorists are the British Army. They shouldn't be here. They're in somebody else's country. What do you feel about the, the bombing that occurred in Enniskillen where several innocent people, civilians, were killed? Horror, shock. Explosives, one of the most deadly weapons of the IRA. If these actions are aimed mainly at British military personnel, innocent civilians have also been victims. In this respect, the bombing in Enniskillen on November 8, 1987, was certainly the IRA's most catastrophic action. Eleven civilians killed. All of us felt so bad about it. It's because it was, it was just shoot, shooting out of heaven. It was the most appalling error of judgment that I think they've made in a long, long time. But, but the IRA uh, certainly haven't got the, haven't got the, the, the market on atrocities. Or Derry, January 1972. British paratroops open fire. 14 civilians killed. In 1980, Brendan Hughes led the first hunger strike of nationalist prisoners in Long Kesh. This drastic action was provoked by prison conditions and the British government's decision to suppress political prisoner status. A 53-day ordeal which very well could have finished with death. In the second hunger strike led by Bobby Sands, 10 Irish nationalists died. Michael Devine was the last on August 20th, 1981. The most uh, lasting feeling that I can remember of the hunger strike was a, a feeling of loneliness. Uh, no matter how many people are around you, uh, there is an absolute feeling of loneliness and a feeling of nowhere else to go. You are there, uh, you have a commitment. I was a political prisoner. Uh, the British were denying my political rights, denying 
that I was a political prisoner and trying to label me as a terrorist and as a gangster. Uh, none of us in the his blacks uh, seen ourselves as that. We were not that. At the same time, the, the, there is a, a beautiful feeling. There is fantastic feelings of comradeship. The war continues, and West Belfast remains a city under siege. British military posts and forts are scattered throughout nationalist neighborhoods. And army helicopters hover above the city 24 hours a day. Cameras, microphones, the most sophisticated technology is employed, all in an effort to seek out a hidden enemy. Every day. Every day. For us, this is just the usual for us. You know what I mean? A little harassment. You know what I mean? A rifle pointed at your head's normal. But thank God you're here today, because if you just weren't here, I tell you what, I wouldn't be starting here. This is fine. This is very strong. All right. Um, all right. Uh, just uh, two weeks ago, I was in one of the IRAs near the hand grenades. Hit had a soldier up the top of the street there, you know? And um, a week before that, they were shooting down the street. Shot a soldier. involvement in the Republican movement when I heard of a British soldier or an RUC man being killed. Uh, I, I felt good about it. I felt that's one of the enemy away. Uh, today I think I, I, I feel sad about it because I don't want anyone to die. Uh, the fact is there is a war going on in Ireland. There are two sides to that war. The Irish people and it's a British establishment. There is no future in this country for my children until uh, the British are removed. Until then, uh, and only then, I'll be happy, and only then my children will be happy. And I felt as dead as those who slept neath the walls of Garion. While Ireland holds my dawn, I love, no rough sea will roll between. For I would lie with my darling love, dressed in jacket's green. Sad is the hearth and sad is the home that around the winds do blow.